make sure that we can, where is it? Share the screen of the Hemingway challenge. How did you find doing the task, uh, Priscilla? How did you find doing the task of the Hemingway challenge? Did you, did you, did you do it? No, to be honest, I haven't done it yet. Okay. Um, Christelle, how did you find doing that task? Uh, it took me quite a time, but uh, finally I did it. Uh, I, I just put together all that I aspired to be or conceived as, as a brand, and I came up with uh, six words. So do you want to tell us what your six... Uh, hopefully you can see the screen now. Uh, yeah. So do you want to tell us about your... How did you get to those six words? What was the process you went through? Uh, just like I said, I tried to put together how I want to be conceived as a brand. Uh, what I aspire, I aspire for. Uh, it, 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 first of all, it, there were many words. I wanted to express myself in many words, but I needed to come up with six words which can explain it all. It took me like uh, an hour or so, but it, it finally worked. Fantastic. And so you, do you want to read out your, you own it, so it's yours. So tell, read it out to us. Yeah, uh, mine is stunning knitwear with a modern twist. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. Has uh, the anybody... company is called Yeah. Can you, any... can you tell us, I, yeah. I, I was looking at that, what is the modern twist? Uh, so here, uh, the crochet and the knitting business is mostly, it, it's not conceived as a modern thing. It used oh. to be done by our, um, uh, like, mummies and aunties yeah. at home. It was more like a hobby. So not most, not, not most people conceive it as something you, like, you, uh, as if you can produce some pieces which can be fashionable. So oh. my, I'm rebranding that in doing uh, fashionable pieces is through crochet and knitting. Ah, oh. can you tell me what is the benefit of being fashionable? Why do people want to be fashionable? I want to attract a younger, a younger target market uh, mm. so that uh, it doesn't only it can only be worn by old ladies uh, so, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with old so ladies I'm, I'm, I'm targeting a different market <laughs> right and and what what is it that the younger people want how do they want to feel about themselves uh, uh, well, uh, they, they want something different Okay. Uh, not only the, the pieces that they see, it, it's, it's not only the younger generation, but also parents uh, for their kids. So yeah. I, I want to broaden the, 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 the target market uh, in co like versus what it, it, it used to be. So basically so, you're putting, sorry, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, no, no, it's okay. So my, my target market for now is uh, parents, mostly for their kids, and okay. uh, the uh, school uniforms. Uh, so those are schools, uh, like school sweaters and stuff. And uh, of course, even um, the, the modern population, if I can say that. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I'm curious because I, I really love that photograph. I mean, I must say, I saw that and I thought, oh my gosh, I wanted yeah, thank to buy. You. No, I really did because I my my niece um has just had a baby, and um okay. I'm, I was literally saying, how can I get that sent to London now? Um, because she's literally uh, about six months old, and. What I liked about this was that you're having the crochet and the lace, the mix. So you seem to be yeah. contrasting different yeah. sorts of fabrics. And I think that's what you seem to be meaning by when yeah, you're by the difference. Yeah. You're putting together pieces 
that would yeah. not ordinarily come together and that's yes. what's interesting so yes i i totally agree thank you yeah. thank you very much yeah but i i actually do want to sorry people i know i'm asking but how much is how much is that little pink one uh it, it's eighteen thousand. okay right see yeah, random see? things uh that's okay. like yeah if that's like 18 18 pounds is it that's pounds right. yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Thank okay. you. So you're mixing you're mixing the modern with the traditional. Yes. In in a very so it's really it's understanding really about your your consumer your customer what what stories they are living each and every day and how your brand is going to resonate with them uh, reflect their lifestyle. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Is that a question? Well, I'm just saying, is, is, is that understanding the, <laughs> the needs of the consumer? Yeah, it was a bad question. <laughs> it was a safe oh. one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm uh, just, so just curious because I'm just curious what Bonfield and um, Pacific and your your peers think about what Christelle has articulated there. Would somebody like to come in? Pacific, Bonfield. Or oh, oh, Priscilla. Or oh, oh, Priscilla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would really like to hear what she thinks. Yeah, Priscilla, what what do you think? Um, well, <laughs> um Crystal, thank you for wanting my opinion. But I really think it's a beautiful uh way to attract the modern market by mixing both um the crochet design with um with a modern twist as you call it um i also think it's uh crochet is never growing old like uh, it's it's something that will always be on fashion even even adults you know i know myself i do like crochet sweaters a lot so i feel like it's something that will always be on style um what you're doing is actually adding a, a, a new test to what crochet looks like and it's going to give you such a big difference in the market like when someone looks at this they know they can't find it in anywhere else but only with crystal or only from your brand which makes it yes. uh, outstanding and yes. adds value in the market um being that you know, thank like you industry we're always yeah, that's so encouraging <laughs> yeah no 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 it's true um i'm not just trying to make you feel good yes. <laughs> it's the truth um like i think in the in the children industry there's a high potential of growth and there's always the market is always there because every day there are new babies born so a brand can actually grow, but as as much as we try to grow, we need to stand out and be different and yeah. give your clients um, a reason why they should buy from you instead of others. So if I look at the dresses you've put here, for sure I've never seen them in other stores. Like I can't walk in in the in the shops around town and find this because what we find in town is mostly the same design all imported from the same place yes and you find like all babies in the hospital in uniform in different colors the same things but if your child or anyone's child wears this and walks out they look different they'll stand out and that is what uh, gives the brand a meaning yeah thank you thank you very much thank you i appreciate um could I actually add, um, that was a really very clear um, understanding. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, and Christelle, um, she really gave you a lot of guidance there. So, and, yes. and I wanted to, I wanted to um, underscore that she wasn't just trying to be nice. She actually was giving you professional advice there. So um, please take that on. I wanted to ask some of the fathers in the room um is is pacific i'm still here yeah around pacific's um, here yes 
Oh, Pacific, what was your take on Chris yes. Dell's outfit? Uh, all right, so, so first of all, uh, I would add that Chris Dell's uh, business is, is, is great because, uh, like she said, uh, these uh, clothes, like a like a knitted clothes, if if I can say, then they uh, used to be some like a type of clothes which were forgotten. Uh, people used to think this is for old yeah. women, and uh, sometimes they, yeah. sometimes, yeah, sometimes they do it as a hobby. You, they knit with a crochet. I remember my mom used to do it. With, she used to to knit her, her scarf, like all our scarves when we were young. So she never thought of bringing it to the market. And now to hear that someone like Christel is doing this, she believes that she can transform this and she can make the, this type of growth be like a attracted to young people is a great thing. In fact, they are good. They are, when you wear it, you feel like you are warm. Uh, so, uh, I, I've seen, the, I've seen, there is also, if I have a, when I was with Daryl, we went to Musanze. Daryl, do you remember? Yeah. Yes, so we, sorry for the car, I'm around the parking. So we we found a, she someone also she was uh, she had this business of knitting a similar thing. So she presented me some cool stuffs, some some cool knitted clothes for babies, and I really really like the way they knitted. So I I ordered her. To, to my little baby, and she looks perfect. <laughs> perfect. Thank she you. Looks perfect with it. I mean, um, there's something you said in there, both of you, for me, uh, being an English father of two girls, one of now 14 and 12. So I used to get, but I really like this idea of this link back to this link back to what you did with your mother. There's this yeah. connection back to the. Yes. The heritage of memories of seeing your mother mm. knitting, and yes. the the memories you have as a young child, remembering that and capturing that moment, and now yes. you're bringing it into 2020 with this modern twist. So, you know, it's I like that. I I can see in my head this 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 um this imagery of the mum doing the knitting, and then. The, the the child growing up and having children of their own and now buying clothes that remind them of their childhood. I, I like. I, I I totally agree with that, Daryl. Um, can I add, Christelle? Christelle? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm listening. I, yeah, what you yeah. are getting, you are now getting what we call the basis of your brand story. Yeah. Yeah. And what um, Pasafik has done, what um, Priscilla has done, what um, Daryl has done, they've actually started to give you ideas of what needs to appear in your story. So yeah, yeah. my suggestion for you after this session is to go and get photographs, photographs from your heritage, which describe each part of the story so i would listen back to this uh session mm -hmm. and listen to the advice that you've been given and i would go and collect photographs and then set the photographs out in an order so as daryl so beautifully explained you have the picture of you know old ladies but the old ladies that we love so therefore they are our mothers. And then you have another set of pictures, et cetera, et cetera, until we come up with your picture. So I'd like you to go and collect photographs. So then 
we have a context for this gorgeous photograph that you have on the Padlet. So that's okay. my suggestion that you should do right after this session. This can then start to build your brand story in tangible photographs that people can relate to. And then the fathers and the mothers can go, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I can <laughs> see myself in this. Yeah. I, I love the way Priscilla said, um, uh. crochet never grows old. I love the way that Daryl says, link back to our mothers. I love the way that um, Pacific says, um, it touched his, him and, and when he thought about his daughter. So let's bring back the emotion into your storytelling by capturing photographs that dis do this. And I think that's your next thing to do. Yeah. So thank you everyone for, for that. I'm, I'm going to not talk anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much. That, that's very instructive. And then tie that into the national strategy as well, you know, it's about women empowerment and some of the values that, you know, women around Rwanda, um, the things that are really important to, to womanhood um, in Rwanda. But, so hopefully that's given you lots of ideas to go on. And out of that, you can therefore then start to, redefine and redevelop the, the business model as we carry on through the weeks. Um, Bonfil. Bonfil's been waiting patiently in the wings. Are you there, sir? Bonfil, I think, do you want to describe your, while we're waiting for um, uh, Spinder to join us, do you want to uh, say something about your value proposition, your six words? Can you speak up a bit? Can't quite hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, let me take a coffee, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would like really to congratulate uh, Crystal uh, for her work. It's, it's really amazing. It's a, a tremendously uh, uh, amazing. It's awesome really to see what she, she's doing here in Rwanda. Uh, she's so creative. Uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, Priscilla also. Uh, I, I'm really excited to see uh, someone really operating in, in the field of kids because I, I love them. I love them so much. I love kids. I, 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 know, I don't know really so far how many kids I will have, if, if I can say. <laughs> I don't know if uh, it will be seven or eight because I love them so much. Does this, does this inspire you to have more children? <laughs> That's fantastic. Christelle, you've got a lot of business. You're inspiring fathers to have more children. Yeah, sure. That's doing. Fantastic. It's inspiring to have more children. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. So, back to my six words. Uh, the good thing is, normally, we, we didn't have these six words before. Uh, we just had uh, our slogan said, learn, play, learn, and then create. Because we believe in that, that uh, kids can learn through, and they can create through play. So, uh, Normally, uh, we didn't have the six words. We just had three words, like learn. No, no, yeah, just play, first of all. And then through playing, you are going to learn and create yourself. So, Ooh, uh, I like that, creating yourself. Mm. Yeah, mm. you can also do yourself something uh, which we, we, you, 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 you've never given by anyone else, neither teacher, even your, your, your parents, mm. just yourself through play, you can create something different mm. and inspiring also. So uh, we had also uh, some longer slogan says, play comes naturally to children and children learn and create 
through play. So we took those two slogans and we, we came up with these six words. And I think they are going really to be our final slogan. Natural children learn and create through play. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I, I don't know if uh, there's some questions. Inspiring. That I can it's actually quite inspiring listening to you. I've written down uh, my um, um, response creating yourself through play. Yeah. That seems to be the message here. You're, yeah. you're helping um, little children um, to create themselves through mm. play to bring out their uniqueness, which only you know which is unique to them and um i think more of a focus on that side the results you know what are the results that happen when you start to play what are the results when you start to learn and i think you're starting to say this here that you're creating yourself so i think a bit more mm. on the outcome the result you know, I started seeing all these mini superheroes being created <laughs> in Rwanda. It's like, oh my God, there's going to be all these mini superheroes created. Um, and perhaps starting to get some photographs again in, in the way that I just asked um, Chris, Christelle to um, explore that creating yourself through play. Yeah. What, 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 yeah. I really like the, I really like what um, Deborah said there, and that picking up on what you said. For me, what sticks in my mind is this: create yourself, create yourself through play. Okay, that's five words, but create yourself through play. I think that's really very powerful in a world where you know um, children really are naturally inquisitive and your product, your, your beautiful toys can really help them explore imaginations, creating new worlds and so on. So, yeah, you know, that yeah. imagination that children need to have because imagination feeds creativity and ultimately as we grow innovation and, you know, enabling p children to play and just have fun. You know, create yourself through play is is really yeah. there's something there I think to build upon as well. Yeah, totally. I I I 100 yeah. agree. And then start thinking about photographs. Um, I'm I'm really photographs photographs that describe show us what you can become. Show us what sort of yeah what you can become. So a, a baby, but. Um, what are the results of playing? So yeah. photographs, if you can start finding photographs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Is that a question or? Uh... <laughs> no, it, it was an instruction, but um, I, it was an invitation, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, Christelle Priscilla. <laughs> <You think? laughs> Go yeah. ahead and do it. Christelle Priscilla, what do you think about uh, Bonfield's? Where are we getting to with Bonfield and his brand? Who would like to say something? Uh, uh, okay, yeah, before they add something, something else to say. Okay, okay. Is that Priscilla or Christelle? Christelle. So I, I really love Bonfi's ideas, uh, and uh, it, it's, it's not quite common here. I don't think I've uh, seen anyone else doing this, um, or, or maybe I don't really know the the, the market for it. I, I'm not a parent myself yet, but uh, uh, this is very interesting. I think it's something we lack here in Rwanda, uh, enabling children to play, uh, and I think it's it's it, it's a, it's an issue that you are addressing, in, which is really important. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just Thank wanted Crystal to go first because I was like, um, I, I, I felt like um, getting her views on this first would uh, also reflect what she's gathered from all our comments about uh, her brand. 
um, but I agree highly and I think, well, I wouldn't just say that that's the future, but we are creating for the future really. Because um, whatever we start now, if we're able to do it well, it will not only sustain um, the economy or ourselves and let us grow as entrepreneurs, but also provide for the future generation which I think it's what we should uh, be, that, that's what should drive us as social entrepreneurs. And uh, also the fact that right now we want to connect the past with the present. Mm. Maybe we should also look at mm. creating the future with the present oh, in yes. order to stay mm. um, yes. relevant. Yeah. Mm. I love that. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm adding I absolutely when you speak Priscilla I can see all these amazing pictures that come in my mind and I hope that you can start seeing pictures as well in your mind Bonfield because that image was so compelling so again I know is this an instruction or is this an invitation <laughs> please go and get some photographs mm -hmm. that you know link um, this little child to the to the past, but this little child to the future. So I can see this image of this little child playing, cr creating themselves, uh -huh. linked to the past, yeah. but linked to this amazing, bright, brilliant future. So it's an invitation rather than an instruction, but go get some photographs. <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. Be a Nike yeah. kid. <laughs> okay thanks so much guys that was a great session and it's great to hear some of the work that you're beginning to do to start articulating your own story for your brand and i i know that as as we've as you've been talking i know that our guest has been listening intently so uh spinda Hello. are you there good morning yes, i'm here good morning Shall I do you want to see me or are you all um oh hello hello good, good it's morning. nice to see you I know it's oh, i'll go and see you as well let me unmute my video oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> how lovely hello everybody. is there anybody else who can unmute and say hello to dr spinder hello hello Spinder. Hello. hi how are you, <laughs> good to see you. Good. hello <laughs> hello everybody <laughs> oh, it's well, like a fascinating session this morning Thank you for joining us oh, and um, um, we hope you're safe and well. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And I hope everybody is. We've had a great said we've had a we started this morning because last week we asked um, the young entrepreneurs to start articulating their their story, their proposition and Fantastic. rewind from where they were to think about the future and the new normal that we all face. And so it's very apt that you've joined us this morning as we look to the future. Spinder, and you've you've helped you know you've helped thousands of students think about their business plan and many of those students have gone on to set up their own businesses and you've helped many of those young people turn their dreams and their passions into reality absolutely so, and there's a lot of energy with young people a lot a lot of um, ability yeah. a lot of energy a lot of creativity so what I mean, it, 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 thanks for joining us. And I know that our, uh, my, our, our young entrepreneurs are already in early startup mode, have been running for one, two, or three years their businesses, and are now in you know in Rwanda facing really coming out of lockdown, facing a new world mm -hmm. where uh, um, access to capital is going to be harder. So there's going to be a need to be more creative and more innovative. Mm -hmm. So you've done a, a lot of research looking at young entrepreneurs and your book, The Millennial Entrepreneur. Everybody's got it. So they're all reading it. <laughs> so, I mean, can you just tell us what you think yeah. now is important for young entrepreneurs as we come I mean, out? It was of... really important for me to study young entrepreneurs because I really think you are the future of, of the world, really, the future of each economy. And really, we need new ways of working, we need smarter ways of working. And it doesn't mean everything has to be high tech. It doesn't all have to be apps and online. There are some physical businesses that need to take place. So, you know, young entrepreneurs, in many cases, they have um, more energy, more time, more ability to not be, um, really have the resilience and the determination to go forward. 
because they believe in their dreams and that is important. What they don't have, they don't have the experience, they don't have the money behind them, the savings, the years of savings. They don't normally have such big networks. So what you must do really, because in many cases in your business, you're trying to do every, every aspect of the business. You have nobody to delegate to in many cases. And so therefore it's important for you to build networks, learn from others and find kind of mentors and they don't have to be formal mentors, but um, understand and value and use new technologies where, where possible. So really you're multitasking, you're doing everything, you're carrying all the risk, but it's an exciting time despite the fearful time we're living in. And I think the other thing with young entrepreneurs is they see chaos as an opportunity. So where people are frightened and they think, well, what is there a tomorrow? Well, where are we going? I think young entrepreneurs have that inner self-belief and they think, yes, we will create this tomorrow and we will do it with our value system. And yeah. that is important because your personal values, your personal ethics, your, your social conscience is very important in the types of businesses that you go forward with. So a strong mindset is extremely important. <laughs> and, and that's really important. You talk about networking and men, the mentors. What is it, what, if you unpack networking, what are the, what some of the, the, the techniques that people can start doing in terms of getting their message okay. out there? I, I, think, I think some of the um, entrepreneurs that I interviewed for this book, they, they were part of um, organizations like the Prince's Trust or um, Shell Livewire, and I'm sure in Rwanda you've got similar types of organizations, but you know, business type organizations or young entrepreneurial organizations. And the importance there is, as a young person, you may not be, you cannot, you're barely paying for yourself, let alone employing others. So therefore, how do you get the, how do you stop being isolated and just really stressing about your problems yourselves? You need to really open up and talk to others. And it could be other people peer entrepreneurs at the same stage as you may be mm -hmm. struggling as well or it could be somebody who's done it for a few more years and is a little bit more um able to, to tell you where you're going right and where you're going wrong or what you know what the ways you should look at but i think on i think really the networking is important because as a as an entrepreneur you need to recognize what you can do and what you cannot do and therefore you need to surround yourself with people with a mindset that's slightly different to yours so if um somebody's good at marketing but others others are good at negotiation or somebody's more of a backroom researcher into the market you know what are your skills and how do you get like-minded people or complementary people together so not necessarily in your own business but in other businesses to learn from them sure. and even in places like linkedin you know it's a cheap way of getting contacts but i've i've really developed a lot of contacts through linkedin that have been very valuable to my work and my research so, so, so one of the things that we're doing today and starting to explore over the next few weeks is about, you know, not just building their own brand identity yes. and their digital identity. Good. And so, you know, you, you, you talked very importantly about think about your strengths as well as your and your weaknesses. Yes. You, you have to recognize to, yourself. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so um, and, and start to build their story. And how do they, building an, would you agree they have to build an authentic story? I do indeed. I think you have to be authentic. You have to be true to yourself, but you have to portray yourself in your best way possible. It's no good saying, you know, you're, you're, you are the showcase to the world. People will see you. They will look at you. If I'm going to buy from you, it could be your product, your service, but more importantly, it's you. Do I trust you? Will I do business with you as a person? Do I feel, you know, do you have that likability quotient, which really overrides a lot of things. It's that trust in you. And your stories will be fascinating. Everybody starting from point zero, really, they've, they've all got a story to tell you've all had ups and downs in life you've all got something that has made you spot an opportunity or create a business that you firmly believe in and you believe that there will be a demand for it or there is a demand for it that you've tested so so you are the showcase to the world and don't be modest I think um, people are quite humble and, and I think that's a beautiful quality but when you are putting out online things on Twitter on LinkedIn on Instagram on any of your social media you need to show yourself at your best you know write nice things show good photos really really try and always 
market your product or service. Now, there's one person called Karen Billimoria. He started off as a very young entrepreneur and he sells Cobra Lager, it's beer. But I have never seen him in a photograph without Cobra in the photograph. You know, the, the brand yeah, is yeah. there. So yeah. whether he's reading a book, whether he's on TV, there's a bottle of beer near him, there's a case near him. And he does it very subtly, but very powerfully. So with you, you associate him with Cobra Lager. People don't remember the name Karen Billimoria necessarily, but they know Cobra Lager. So they think, yes, we'll have that lager with our Indian food. <laughs> so, um, you know, so, so it's really pushing your product, your service, so people recognize it and with a trustful person behind it who has energy and enthusiasm. Yeah, and there's that consistency, isn't there? Yeah, you're right about Kim and Bill and Moria. You always think of Richard Branson, another UK entrepreneur with his, you know, pullover and his his yes. open neck shirt. So you always associate imagery is very important, therefore. Imagery is because you know, the more you and and in today's date, it's a social media world. You are out there, you can't hide you can't hide and sell your product. You have to be the face of it. And um, you have to negotiate with suppliers. You've got to <clears throat> talk to customers. So you're always out there. And, and that's important. And so you have to have these presentation skills. And they will come when you're authentic. You really believe in your product and you really believe in yourself, despite the doubts and the fears and the, the yes. risks that you're taking. Yes, that's really great advice, Spinda. Thank you. Um, we've got some great young entrepreneurs here, some of whom are fashion, running fashion businesses, clothing businesses, educational toy companies, uh, grocery wow. retailers online. I'd like to open out now to um, our young entrepreneurs, any questions they may have for Dr. Spinder. Hello. <laughs> They're shy. <laughs> Does anybody want to say anything? Deborah, perhaps you'd like to uh, start off? Hello, Deborah, Priscilla, Christelle. Christelle, what um, do you think? Okay, okay carry on. Yeah. Priscilla, please. Priscilla, please. Christelle. No, I'll, I'll let Christelle go. They're all here now. Oh, oh, oh uh, hi, it's been the. Hello, Christelle. This is a very interesting session. And I like uh, what you are saying about not being humble because, uh, okay, I've, 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 I've been caught in that trap myself for so many years. I, I, my company is trying to rebrand itself. It, it, it just didn't uh, start now. We have been working for five years, but this year we, st we, we decided to rebrand ourselves. But I, I really understand uh, what you are saying about not being humble. So uh, thank you for that. I, I'm getting quite a lot for this. I, I, I really don't have a question, but... Uh, uh, what, have just you found, what have you found is your biggest challenge in your business when you're trying to rebrand? What do, what do you find is um, holding you back? Uh, what was holding me back? Mm -hmm. If anything. Uh, so I, I, before my, the, my business idea was not so innovative. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it, it, there were so many people doing it. Sure, That's it's why. quite an market, yes. Uh, but fortunately, uh, we, we had many talents in my business. So we tried to look for a, one idea which can be quite unique, if I can say, so, so that we, we can take a jump and start uh, getting successful so that we are in uh, we are on the road for, that's of, of good that. I mean, I'm, I'm eyeing enviously that handbag behind you in the picture <laughs> it is amazing <laughs> I could do with that oh, thank you yes. well what Christelle she's very humble mm -hmm. and so what, <laughs> but what we, as, she, as, as many young Rwandans are and um but actually what christelle next time you're going to have a picture with your new products there with the the oh, crochet right. and because now she's she's creating a modern twist on children's clothing with oh, crocheting and modern materials to create something really very different and inspiring for there'll always be a market for children's clothing they really will yeah. and then you can broaden your brand can't you you can broaden it and try and um you know, really be the expert on children, you know, just give them a little bit extra 
So focus yeah. not on the brand, but um, have stories to tell, you know, whether it's about your own children, nieces, nephews, something, you know, or, or, or one um, entrepreneur I met, even from an early start, they tied, and I'm not necessarily saying you should do this, but they tied something to a charity each one. So if they did something for children, they tied it to a children's charity. Now, you don't have to give that much, but you know, it just gave them that cheap, publicity almost so, so they're doing something good plus they're getting a lot of publicity i'm not necessarily saying that will work but it's something to think about so you need to just raise your profile and sometimes you need a helping hand and a bigger organization with a bigger name that can take you forward and really bandy your name around that's a lovely idea about in uh, partnership development yes and creating partnerships with others uh, whether they are a charity or a UNICEF or a Save the Children, or I, I mean, we also have Bonfield here who, who creates educational toys. Oh so you, you were talking about, you know, extending your brand and looking at different collaborations. Maybe this Bro, can I say something? I, I wanted to correct something. It, my brand is not only about kids. It's not it's only about children. Crochet. Yeah, that's one of the so things that you're looking do at. All kind of crochet uh, oh. products and uh, yeah. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. Thank and you. Good. Yeah. And do you sell um, physically? Do you have a store or do you do it online? How do you sell your wares? Uh, I have a shop, uh, but we are going, we are planning to get online soon, uh, okay. like a uh, website and stuff. Good, good. Because that's another whole business, isn't it? It's a very different way of selling things and it requires a lot more effort and different resources and technology. Yeah. Good, good. good. No, that sounds amazing. Yes. I think, I think it's a difficult one. You don't want to narrow your product range too much, but, but you know, or, you know, or be a specialist. So you want to keep it open, but there's, there's always that you know that that kind of um, balance really well what is it you're going to be known for is it going to be known for adult clothes women's clothes men's clothes children's clothes or do you specialize in something you know and that's something further down the road you can make a decision on not at this stage and maybe there's a stage staging of, the, of phasing it in yes so and you build a brand around a lifestyle connected into your consumers and really be aware of what's happening in Rwanda today. You know, you're, you're the fashion queen, you know about fashion. You should be writing articles in um, magazines. You should be putting up a blog. And, you know, you should be telling people, this is what fashion is, this is today's fashion, and I'm, I'm a leader here. That's a great that's idea. Why, you know, you're not humble, you are a leader, you know about fashion, you are in the trade. So therefore, you know, your suppliers will look on you more favorably as well as your customers. And it just um, gives you that extra edge. It's just building that rounded profile, mm. not just selling directly. It's just the rounded profile as an expert. So becoming oh, known as the go-to in absolutely. their field. The go-to, or someone others aspire to be, you know, mm. someone, someone who, who really is, is you know, beautiful, who's out there, who's wearing the right clothes, knows how to advise others on their clothes. And, um, you know, have the photos, have, have happy customers, you know, just to just get out there and, um, yeah. you know, a volunteer to do um, stage shows. I mean, I, I even stayed in this hotel in Mauritius once and um, they, they just had a very small boutique in the hotel, just a few things in there. But one night they, they let all the, you know, they chose some female guests in the hotel to showcase their clothes and walk along the runway, you know, a, a runway. And people were buying their clothes, which you would not have even looked at before. You would not have even bothered yeah. that shop. Yeah. So it's little things, it's you nice. know, fairly cheap, but um, it, it, that's all through networking and having the confidence to get out there and ask. That's oh, true. Spinder, this Deb, Deborah speaking. Um, Hi, welcome Deb. to today. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you, is there anything in your background, perhaps in writing or journalism or whatever, that you might like to share with people um, so they get more of a sense of how you developed your amazing networking skills? Okay, I'll tell you exactly what I did. I, I um, am very much, I'm from India originally, that's where my parents are from, and I came to the UK at the age of three. So a typical second generation on, you know, immigrant into the UK, which was a very difficult society. My father had to work very hard. 
and um, and eventually they bought a shop and it was just a small shop, a typical grocery shop. And um, I remember working all hours there because in those days, you know, you, you had to get up at six o'clock to sell newspapers. You don't close till about nine, 10 at night. And um, my whole childhood was taken up working and helping my parents in the shop. I would go to school and I would come back in the lunch house and my dad could go to the cash and curry buy, you know, buy things from the cash and carry, bring them back. Then I'd go back to school and then in the evening I'd work in the shop. So it was, it was um, you just grow up in it. You don't, I, I did moan as a teenager, not wanting to do all that, but, it, but it, that, that was my life. But my parents really wanted, you know, their daughters, I've got three sisters, to be educated. So we did study hard and I did go to university. And it was then while I was studying, I was started doing my PhD. And very early on, I... Um, reading a lot of the papers about the um, immigrant community and I thought there's my parents working night and day in just one shop which is a lifestyle business and then I looked at other Indian entrepreneurs who had come over at the same time and some of them had achieved phenomenal success where they were multi-millionaires they were exporting their goods to over 80 countries and it just um, really um, it got, got my interest and so I um, was writing to a lot of the newspapers and one of the newspapers, Eastern Eye, Asian Times at that time, it was called Asian Times. They took me on as a writer, so it's so a very amateur writer. So I managed to interview these business people and I started writing columns and I got known for writing these columns. And then at the same time I was doing my PhD, but then um, I, one of the newspaper editors asked me to, um, be the editor of the Asian rich list. Now, it's very superficial. In this country, we have the Sunday Times rich list where they quantify the value of rich individuals. And um, so I was doing, I, I guess, a smaller version because the wealth of Asians was much lower. We didn't have the inherited wealth in this country. And so that was a great opportunity for me. And so I was interviewing these people, mainly men, because in Asian communities, they do tend to be patriarchal. And it was funny because um, the men would always say, it's my business and want their name and the amount of money they, they were valued at. Whereas if a woman was running a business, she would all, always add her husband's name. The men never gave that respect. And it was quite interesting that I was trying to get more and more women into the list as well. So it was a fantastic project. And I did that for six years and got a lot of articles out of that, a lot of publicity and books out of it. My previous book, Making a Fortune, Learning from the Asian Phenomenon, was based on the Asian Rich List. So it kind of just developed there and then it mushroomed and then the networks just mushroomed. But, but I was lucky I had that publicity. I had the backing of the Rich List, which was, um, you know, which was fantastic. So that, that's kind of how the story developed. So thank, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, um, yeah. and uh, that's, uh, uh, there were so many um, aspects to that story that I think that we all can connect to the whole thing of starting from one position and then raising to such level of prominence, the amount of hard work that you've clearly put in. Um, and then this, uh, then you articulated this process of networking. Um, and I really got a sense from what you described that we can do this. So when you are, um, providing guidance and inspiration and direction you're really doing this from a position of I've been there I've got the t-shirt keep going you've got the energy but make the stories make the stories work for you so thank you very much I mean I would invite anybody else. Deborah, whatever position you start I mean really if you think of it I was a second generation immigrant we we had a small shop we were not wealthy we were not we were not going places someone like that could barely have afforded an education it just happened my dad was very much wanting you know us to be educated and you know and then it's up to you to take it and to open the doors because the the world you know I've been on radio I've been on tv I've been in mag newspapers and written for all those and yet that, that's because I was determined to do it and I thought I'm going to do it and all of you can you can achieve that level of publicity you can get that for your business there's nothing stopping you you just have to keep on pushing thank you very much very 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 clear guidance um I'd love to invite the um all the other um participants to ask um Spinder some more questions I'm sure you're equally as inspired by her story Sure. Um, thank you very much. My name is Priscilla and um, 
um, I, I've really been inspired by your story, just listening and uh, seeing um, how you involved yourself in your parents' business from the beginning. Maybe not by choice, um, <laughs> but more of, uh, you yeah. know, that's what you have to do when you're at home. Parents tell you what to do or mm -hmm. as a good child, you just support your parents. But you, you grew up to get interested in the same sector and also um, used your talent. I don't think writing is something everyone can do. It's, it's a talent. It's something that uh, it's a skill that some people develop by learning, but others, it's just a gift. Um, so I'm not so sure if for you it was a gift or it's something you developed, but still you used it to advocate for what you believed. But Priscilla, now I think, Priscilla, I think now you've yeah. got more choices because now it's a very Instagram type of society. So <laughs> you don't write, even if yeah, you have yeah. one good picture and then you just have, you know, a, a sentence under it. That actually sells more than any story these days. Yeah. If you don't yeah. feel comfortable writing, you can raise your profile just by, you know, just by being you. <laughs> mm, that's true. Um, and also, I think right now we have a lot of free platforms to use. Uh, people are blogging and all that, uh, um, which gives us entrepreneurs a chance to share our stories. I would say, um, you know, I would also say conserve your energy because I think because there are so many platforms and I've seen mm -hmm. people, they, um, you know, they're twittering all day and they're doing things all day. And then after a while, people get fed up with them because it's almost mm. like they're in your face all the time. So I yeah. think you have to really... Um, say so what do I want out of this? What do I want people to know me or my product or my uh, service for? What is, what is your business, Priscilla? Oh, sorry. Um, yes, mine is also a children clothing. Oh, business. sure. Okay, fantastic. So, so um, very clear, very clear what you're doing. And so, yeah, so um, kids from newborns to twelve years old, and we focus on, uh, I can say, contemporary kind of designs and also trying to put a mix between the local style and the modern style to, to make sure that um, children Love have this it, vibrant yeah. new look. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, See, so it's so very visual, very visual and very um, newsworthy, really. Mm -hmm. So you, you could, um, even if you just set yourself, you, you would say, right, I'm just going to spend one hour a week mm -hmm. on social media and I'm going to say this week, this is mm -hmm. what I'm going to um, focus on. And, and then, you know, it could just be one item of clothing or one range of clothing mm -hmm. or one you know, and, and then, you know, be kind to yourself because you, you, you haven't got unlimited time and you haven't got that. But so, so really just set yourself that target, even if it's just, you know, a short time a week, focused is better mm -hmm. than just trying to do it willy-nilly and in all directions, hoping somebody mm -hmm. will get you. And try and yeah. sort of, um, follow people that you want to be your suppliers or want to be your customers. Follow the mm -hmm. right people. Make sure they know your name and they know what you're mm -hmm. providing. Yes. Mm. Um, I, I can say that um, in the beginning it was really hard for me I'm not a social um, I'm not a very <laughs> active social person out there and um, back in 2016 20, yeah, 2016, 2017 I was finding it really hard even my Instagram page it's, it's my friend who created it for me for the business because I kept saying I can't get myself to, to get on Facebook or Instagram I don't like it but um, the minute we got ourselves out there, my co then concern was content. But I was like, I, I need to make it interesting. I need to make sure that it's going on well. Yeah. Um, until yeah. now, we have about 1,500 followers. Fantastic. Not yet a big number, but... Oh, no, it's, a very, yeah. it's very good. It's very good indeed, yeah. Yeah, but, but I can say that I've gained a lot of business connections and people that I haven't met physically only through the social network and also you know people are seeing the product and and people are buying straight from there unfortunately for like instagram we don't have yet the click to buy for rwanda but um we're still able to make sales people get into your inbox and say i want that item i want this item and my worry for content at first of course there are a lot of 
business people out here would be like get a photographer get a professional photographer get this get that yeah um, that's because, but yeah. looking at all that as a small yeah. business i was like it's it's consuming it's a lot of money you but... don't want to spend that kind of money no i, th- I think really utilize what you can for free at the moment yeah. no, so the funny thing is of a lot of parents sent me their kids pictures so oh. i just asked them to send like good quality pictures and I, that's how i get my content and i try at least um twice a week or I look for days because with Instagram, you can see which days you have most views. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I try to say, okay, if it's a Friday or a Saturday, parents are at home, they're with their children, they're checking social media. Or Monday, they're really bored at work, they don't like to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so they'll be on social media. That kind of thing has, That's brilliant. has helped also, us a little. There's also a ripple effect because sometimes you put things out there and you think, oh gosh, nobody's really looked at them. And then mm-hmm. a few weeks later, because people have sat on them, and then a few weeks later, you get a phone call or you get an email and you think, oh, you know, it mm-hmm. didn't go into people's minds. So the mm-hmm. more you carry on being out there, the better it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it is hard work because you don't, it's like you say, you're not naturally that person that would really put your life on online, as it were. But mm-hmm. you've seen yeah. it very well. My, my, myself, I was really, I never liked putting a picture that has me in it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I just want my brand to be known for my brand and not That's to put to my face. Sure. But it's funny because the few times where I have to maybe put a picture with me in the sh- shop or something, it gets like more views and people oh, are commenting. There you go, there you go. Then it's, cool. it's tempting, it's modesty. tempting, but then you're, I, I'm like, I stick to saying, no, 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 it's about the brand, it's not about me. I think but it's about both of you. People I think trust people you. like connecting the brand to the person somehow. I they really know. do. They want to know who you are as a person and they, they really want that connection, which is, which is amazing. Oh, but then the, your next stage then if you are doing that then your next stage is what what would you where would you take this where would you go next you know what what do you aspire to you know what's mm. the next stage and you you see where you're getting the most hits well what's working what isn't mm. you know, and and then think about it so so keep an open mind and just be alert to opportunities mm-hmm Thank you very Thank much. You, Spinder. Thank now, you, Now, I'm conscious of time. Have, have we got you for a bit longer, Spinder? I'm, I'm fine if you are, because I know you're, you've been working hard on <laughs> Not that well, so it's great to have you. And thank you so much for your insight so far and I just telling it. your story, because I think that inspires all of us as well. Thank you. Um, I'm conscious. Bonfield, do you want to say anything? Pasafik, Dr. Spinder is here. Bonfield, go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Spinder. Yeah, thank Hello. you for thank you for sharing your insight. Really, it's a very interesting session. Yeah, and I really loved your book. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have just one question. It's not even a question. Just uh, your 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 view about this. Uh, you you shared in your book what you say uh, what you call the uh, six or seven uh, key. Key, key learning, if I remember well. Yeah, so uh, among those key learnings, you mentioned uh, minimize your debt and go for grant funding. Do you remember that? I, I think minimize that. your debt and what did you, what was the other one? Sorry? Uh, sorry, you broke up there. So if you just repeat your last sentence. Yeah, sure. Uh, among the key learnings you, pro- you, you shared in your book, Yes. You, uh, I, I just I pick one. You. Say it. Minimize your debt. Right. right. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah. I mean, the, what I I mean really, I right? it was important to minimize your debts because. Uh, I mean, in a way, like as the previous speaker was saying, she doesn't want to hire a photographer for now because it would be a waste of money. I think one mistake people make, and I think they glamorize what entrepreneurship is, and they think, oh, I'm going to buy a Mercedes, I'm going to do this, I'm going to travel first class, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. You know, you don't get rich quick as an entrepreneur. It's, it's hard work. It's very, very hard work. It's risky you're, you're um, combining maybe childcare with other responsibilities. It, it, it takes a lot out of you. So I think um, 
it's really cautioning you to really think about how to do it as cheaply as possible, particularly, well, not just in the early stages, like in fact, nowhere along the line, even if you're, you know, becoming an SME or further, can you afford to waste money in today's, you know, economy. So really, it's, it's a shoestring budget to start off with. And that's why networks in some ways provide things for free uncles and aunts and other people they're almost like non-executive directors giving you advice for free in many cases and it, it's it's really trying to not not borrow more than you need to and stay within your means as much as you can so to really minimize on risks in that sense financially yeah sure thank, thank you so much so i i remember when i started my business i had just one thousand one and francs equal to one pound if I remember. Yeah, I, I, I was uh, very stuck with money and I was really uh, attracted with uh, some banks uh, advertisement saying, please come, we, we are going to give you loan uh, easily yeah. without many, many uh, uh, requirements. Yeah. Uh, I was like, am I going really to afford this? If, yeah. uh, if I fail, how am I going really to repay this money? yeah. And I remember uh, just the first command that I had from uh, one school, uh, the money that I, 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 I gained from that uh, command, that was the first money that I ran the office. I, I, I hadn't that time even the office. So mm. slowly uh, I, I tried really to, to fight with this uh, kind of uh, uh, cash list. No, no, not, not cash list, but... Uh, the lack of money, the lack of in enough investment in this business. And finally, I got grant from uh, one of the NGO here in Rwanda, operating in Rwanda. Uh, so now I can see how important it is to find grant. So, yeah. But the question is, how could these young entrepreneurs could escape and uh, really connect with uh, NGOs or people who can help them to get grants instead of loans? Um, I mean, that's a powerful question. And you were very sensible in your business not going for those easy loans because you would be in so much trouble if you had. I think, um, I think it's a very important access to finance is the biggest issue in all the research I've done, whether it's been with the rich people or with the young entrepreneurs, with women in business, access to finance is very difficult. And normally, you know, people at the early stage, they use what little savings they have. They maybe get money from parents or family. But other than that, it's, it's very difficult. And I agree with you, grants are clearly better than um, loans because then you, you, you don't have to pay them back. I think the other thing that works for some people are if there's competitions where there are financial prizes, if you have competitions, don't be afraid to enter them, you know, because I think they, that a lot of free money comes from them. They're few and far between. But um, there are, I suppose it's less sophisticated, but there would be angel investors, maybe more sophisticated businesses, people who have retired, who want to put their money into somebody younger. And you can only find them through your networks and through your own personal confidence. None of those are easy. None of those are easy. Women generally like to borrow less money than men. They're, they're, they're more risk averse than men, I found in my research. And so they tend to contain the business and manage it to what they feel comfortable with rather than take on loans, etc. cetera. And um, that has all sorts of implications in terms of the growth of businesses eventually. But it, it is difficult and I think access to finance is the hardest. And I think, you know, it, there's a gender problem there as well because I found with the Asian community, the men used to help each other. If somebody said, oh, I'm looking for premises, other guys, other people would say, oh, we know of a vacant shop in such and such an area. They would tell that person. Whereas if the women were saying, oh, we, we need to do something, they would say, oh, why don't you get a part-time job instead? So there are all sorts of um, attitudes. I'm, I'm digressing slightly, but, you know, the, the, there's lots of um, things that hamper getting money even before you actually, you know, get, get the business. But I think you're wise to turn down easy money in the early stages. And I think you 
it, it's like doing everything it's small steps and um really seeing the value of that money if i borrow that money how will that impact my business beneficially and you know how much confidence do i have that i can repay that within that contractual period so there's no easy answer with access to finance i'm afraid and angie said earlier younger businesses have less of a track record mm -hmm. absolutely so, they've got so, no collateral so the importance of building your personal brand, building your networks, going out there, demonstrating that you are somebody to be listened to, to engage with the, the expert within the, the field. And to negotiate, negotiate yeah. with suppliers, try and get as low prices as you possibly can, you know, tell them who you are and that, you know, that you're just started, well, you're not just started up, but yeah, I think negotiation, how good a negotiator are you? How good are you getting your friends to do things for free for you? <laughs> they pay for that afterwards, but um, you can do something different in return for them. But um, I think hard cash is hard to come by. Do you feel that it's not always cash, that it, it can sometimes be goods in kind, it can sometimes be investment in other ways that could come Absolutely. in? Absolutely. I think that's the most powerful for young entrepreneurs because rarely will you really, you know, it's not a transactional thing. It really is about other things. How can people help you? And sometimes advice. You can talk to somebody for five minutes and they can save you thousands over your lifetime. So it's who, you have to be alert to opportunities. I think keep your mind open and help will come in lots of different ways. And, and that's why we're so delighted to be working with the, the young entrepreneurs as we are who have taken that step to get some good advice and some good guidance and we haven't just spent five minutes with you we've spent around 45 minutes with you this morning it's gone very quick. <laughs> um, it's gone, thank you well it's been a great discussion so so thank you very much i'm just wondering if anybody has any final comments they'd like to uh, to to offer uh, or questions they may have before we let spinder spinder go well i wish you absolutely the best in your businesses they sound amazing and i look forward to hearing more about them as we grow you. i might even write about them at a later stage i think i think, I think we might ask you to, to do that yes uh, bonfield did you have a final word to say i think you've you've come online you're unmuted yeah. just just to say thank you so much for your book and uh, uh i'm so i'm really delighted to read it and uh, i think uh in this week i'll, I'll always finish every there's a chapter <laughs> that's very kind thank you so much but i think uh, it's very very it, it's wonderful to see what you what you, you write inside there that's very kind thank you so much help me promote it we are <laughs> you're rwanda, we're reaching you've got, it. Yeah, you've got, you've got, you've got, you got 25 new customers in rwanda so uh, <laughs> Uh, Christelle, Priscilla, do you want to have some final words to say to uh, to Spinder? No, mine is just thank you, and um, I look forward to reading more of your book. And uh, I think maybe next time we'll have more questions. Thank you, <laughs> thank, you. thank you for thank sharing you. all your wisdom, and good luck with everything. Thank, thank you. you. And Chris, Christelle. Uh, yeah, just a thank you too. I, I would like really to thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. It was very instructive. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, Pasafik, you've been quiet. Are you? Do you want to say a few words? No, he's not there. Uh, Deborah, the final word should rest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just going to say thank you. It's been such a. Hello? In, 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 Incredible. Oops. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, yes, I sorry. Yes. Yeah, I, I just wanted to really thank you. I mean, I know you personally. I do find that you are an incredibly inspiring woman. Um, I think you actually underplayed um, significantly um, the impact. I just want people to know that she's really a mover and shaker. When she <laughs> talked about that work that she did in the early days with Asian Times, etc., that was an incredible time, a renaissance time in London, UK. So when she is talking um, um, about the way that she developed her research and the way that she um, developed her PhD and she moved through things, she is really underplaying the major impact that she has made um, um, in her community and the wider community. And I really, 
um, I, I, I bow my head to you um, because I think that you are, um, you are a giant amongst us. And many people don't say that, but I certainly recognize you. So thank you ever so much. Deborah, that, that yeah. means a lot. And I know you were part of that, that era, as it were, and it was such an exciting time in the UK. Such an exciting time. And yeah. we were lucky to be a part of it. And I think, you know, it's, you're right. It, there's so much there. So thank you for all for your kind words. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, everyone. And um, most of all, thank you, Spinder, for spending time with us this morning. We will, we will really see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. I will now take my leave. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye-bye. Bye. -bye -bye. Bye. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Are we there? Can you see me, hear me? Great. Yes, we're here. Good. Yeah, I think that was such a wonderful um, 45, 50 minutes we had Go with, ahead, Daryl. with Spinder. Can you hear me? um yeah am i well 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 why she's while she's gone um I, I i cannot really underestimate how amazing um she is she's incredibly humble you can see from you know that she's an incredibly humble person but honestly in those particular days there was such a level of hostility towards various communities and they really um continued to press on forward so I would, I would invite you to um, keep track of her. Um, she really does have a, a, a number of amazing connections. And, you know, when you look at that title, millionaire, etc., it looks all glamorous. But she's really um, um, has insight into the, the, what's behind the scenes, what we can't see, and what went into making um, these um, entrepreneurs as amazing as they are, particularly the, the female stories. Men, I'm, I'm, I'm not putting you aside, but her stories about the, the Indian female community and how they had to really find a way forward um, are significant. And then, so, so now in the UK, you'll find lots of um, Asian women's businesses. They're in the, they're in the major supermarkets. Um, you know, I now can buy my curry paste from the major supermarkets. That's as a result of the energy that the women pull together as they work collaboratively. So, um, and that's just an example. So, I'm, I'm, you, you have no idea how much when I say she is a giant amongst giants. And there's some, there's some, obviously, there's some parallels there with the work that you guys are doing as well, Christelle and Priscilla as well. So, um, can you all hear me? I'm just conscious that. Uh, yeah, 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 we yeah. can. Yes, yeah. we so, can. Yeah, I just a wonderful. I've I've recorded this, so go back again and again and listen to her words, and read her words, and her spirit comes through. For me, what was very clear was she. She's built a very strong personal brand in a particular space, and she is known for what she does. And she's very consistent in her messaging and articulates that very, very clearly. I mean, there's a lot we can all learn from, from her. We are um, blessed to have um, Spinder as a colleague of ours um, in our University of Westminster roles. Okay, shall we move on just a little bit? Um, which I mean, actually, builds on very nicely from a lot of the things that Spinder was saying, and some things that we would really like you to uh, to think about, uh, as well as your um, as well as your. Um, let's see if I can get this to work. I can see that but, uh, I can't move it. Oh, there we go. So we we're very. So it's about building your personal brand. And something which Spinder was very clear about was, you know, being authentic in articulating who you are, authentically presenting yourself. And as she says, as a, as a young entrepreneur, you're the one who represents your brand. You are the, the personality behind your brand and people want to see it. So was it you, Priscilla, that said that you don't often like, didn't like to be seen in the picture with your product but when you yes when you do have yourself with the more people tend to view it yeah because there's a 
Yes, yep. that's right. Mm -hmm. So, so often people want to know who is behind, who's the face of the brand. Um, and you've got a wonderful opportunity to step forward, we feel, and to to be the young entrepreneurial leaders within Rwanda and to take those steps forward. So as your brand moves forward, you begin to embrace that. You feel more confident about it and you're able then to, to connect yourself with the brand and investors, suppliers, the media, government of Rwanda, um, customers can all sense that you are connected very closely to your brand, that you're not just interested, but you're very committed and passionate about something you believe in. Deborah. Deborah, would you like to add something? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to just reinforce what you're saying. So no, um, th there's nothing that I, well, that's not really true, is it? Um, there is something I want to say. Um, uh, when you're thinking about your stories, please always think about the outcome uh, because as Aspinda mentioned, she talked about the struggle. She talked about her process of changing but what did she become, what did she transform into? You know, it's a bit like a caterpillar into a butterfly. What did she transform into? And that's what people, that's why people are interested in your story. That's why people want to see your, your image. It's not always necessarily the physical image, it's the what your image stands for. So what, how did you transform yourself and or how does the product and service that you offer how does that transform them so what do they now become so it's a bit like i don't know what you're like ladies when you get dressed to go out partying but i know that when i'm looking like hot smoking happening i go yeah i can do anything it's almost like i've adopted a new character i've transformed um and i don't know if that happens to you um but that's the sort of thing you need to ask yourself when people put on my clothing or my product who do they now become and that's what I want you to really focus on when you're thinking about your brand story. They're, they're one person before they wear your outfits, but now they wear your outfits, who do they become? Yeah. Yeah. So that you're at the same time as you're building a sustainable business brand, you're building a sustainable, authentic personal brand. And Agreed. both of those, both of those, both of those have to be authentic. And today, it, it's great listening to your stories, you're articulating your stories, um, your six word propositions, uh, you've begun to think of some ideas off of that. And then, you know, we've explored some more ideas of Spinder, providing some more really interesting angles as well for you to explore and think about. So it's about whether you're building a business brand or a personal brand, it's about you have to invest wholeheartedly into what you're doing and be authentic so you know when you look out there you see that there are celebrities personalities um executives government officials that do stand for something and there are those that you resonate with and those that you feel mm, mm, is that real is that fake um they're saying one thing here but then they're saying another thing here he there mm, it's all a bit disjointed this is not a thing that you can just do this afternoon or tomorrow or this week. This yeah. takes time. Yeah. And just as it's about taking time to develop your, your rewired business model and using that canvas as the foundation stone stones, this is another thing that takes time for you to think about and to process. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Daryl. I was, I was going to interrupt. So I'm, I'm so sorry. No, carry on. Um, each one of you, so what are your takeaways? Um, Priscilla, Christelle, Pasafik, um, 
what do you Bonfield what is it that you're now going to do as a result of this session could you share with us mm. what's the next step that you're going to do after this session mm. yeah thank you this is Bonfield speaking um, thank you for the, the question really uh, I, I was thinking what I'm going what am I going to do what am I going to do uh, the first thing is uh, on my side is just to to reinforce my social medias because uh, if I remember well uh, I just opened uh, the uh, Instagram two or three days ago <laughs> so <laughs> when uh, Dr. Spinders uh, was speaking I was like uh, I, well, it, I, I, I've been left behind I'm old um, I'm, I'm 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 really doing things in the wrong way. So what am I going to what am I going to do this now? As a question, the first thing is really to reinforce my social medias, uh, such as uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Good. Uh, normally, I often use Twitter and uh, and Facebook, but Instagram, Snapchat, really, I'm not friendly with them. Uh, so I, I'm really going to do that and. Uh, Good. Put focus in uh, TikTok. In just, uh, TikTok. Mm. Are you going to do anything on TikTok? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do that. I think I'm old. I don't know. Well, oh, but your your customers are not. So think about how you can. It how seems to, uh, TikTok <laughs> seems quite relevant to that age group. It does feel quite relevant for the age group, as as Deborah said. Think about the world through your lens of your your consumers and your customers. And mm -hmm. look at how TikTok is being used by others yeah, sure. and get some sure, inspiration sure. from how it transfers into your authentic context. Yeah. yeah. This conversation really is, uh, is, is changing my mind and uh, that it makes me to see things differently. Good. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I uh, also I could, I could, uh, I could say um, the session was great. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Spencer uh, gave us a great, a valuable uh, advices, even though I was not um, around <coughs> due to projects I'm working on. However, uh, I was uh, watching the, uh, the, the screenshot. Uh, about personal brand and uh, also had the conversation between all of us. Uh, one, one key takeaway I got uh, is about like a, like a Debra and, and uh, Daryl continues to say uh, like the owners of the company are the, uh, should be, are the faces of the company of course so people want to do business with with people they know. So that means mm. brand it, mm. Brand is built on the personality, is built, built on a, a real, not a robot. <laughs> so that means uh, social media is very crucial in business. Like mostly like I'm an architect, so I do, I use, I normally use it, though I'm not using it really efficiently. I'm continuing to learn. Like uh, I appreciate very much Debra for valuable, valuable information she continues to, to share with me. They really shape my my thinking, and also I continue to learn. So, um, in, uh, social media is very important. Okay, so 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 it's really good that you've got that clarity. What's the next yeah. physical step that you think you're going to take as a result of this session today? And it, it could be small. It could be I'm going to go get a cup of tea and relax, or it could be something. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? But what what's the yeah. next step that comes to your mind to say I must do this today? Hmm. Okay. My next thing to do is. Uh, I'm going to continue to to put in action what I'm okay during the rock, the lockdown I've been uh, learning and I think most of us have been lockdown has uh, or COVID-19 has just 
showed us that we really need to think in different perspectives. So, including business owners. So, my on my side, I'm, I'm I've been thinking and I've been working on my uh, my my communication, my business, my communications, especially marketing communications. So like what, what, what are you specifically doing? Have you written something? Have you rewritten your biography? What what specifically will you be doing? Specifics. Okay. So currently, I'm uh, I'm working on a, on a, on a, like a providing brief on every project, so that every materials because I when I Excellent. do renders what yeah what what we call renderings is like a generating a project into video motion like a. The one for Shibuka, uh, virtual mm. what which we use. So I, I I'm I, I'm creating okay. some f contents behind the reason why we do this. We did this. Excellent. Uh, yeah, what I love we want that. to achieve. Things yeah, like yeah. That. Because, like a case history. This is the exactly. project. This is what yeah. it was. Excellent. This Excellent. is when it started. Excellent. This is when it completed. Exactly. This is what we're yes. proud of. And, and I think, yeah. you know, look at some digital publishing platforms like Issue, I-S-S-U dot com, how you can turn yes. that into a really engaging set of, you know, a set of, you've got the materials, you are um, an architect, you are a designer, okay? Yeah. So you are able to, to develop these wonderful materials and then look at other ways of publishing that in a really compelling format. That's one thing. Definitely. Yeah, good, 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 great. Good. Right. Okay. Anybody okay. else is, is going to share just one thing that they're going to do right after this session? What, what occurs to you to be the next right step to do right after this session? Uh, uh, this is Christelle. So what I'm going to do after this is uh, working on my story. All your inputs was uh, really amazing. So I got some great ideas from this session of what I'm going to put in my story. And uh, of course, uh, it, it has added confidence in my product. Thank you very much for all your appreciation. Uh, so I'm going to work on articulating my brand and stop being humble. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Wow. That's amazing. Fantastic. You are, you are definitely a leader. You've already decided to be a leader and you've demonstrated this. And now the storytelling will start to elevate you even more. So I, I'm really inviting you to enjoy this new space that you've now entered into. The world of your storytelling. Fantastic. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant, Christelle. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Deborah, can I just ask, do you think it's worth us creating this uh, a mood board, uh, a, a, a Padlet mood board where they can just put up their images? Boom, 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 It'd be boom, wonderful, boom, boom. Daryl. I would okay. absolutely welcome yeah. this. Okay. That, um, because, you know, I mean, you can hear that I keep talking about pictures, pictures, mm. pictures, and you can hear that mm. Spinder, and mm. we didn't talk, we didn't organise this before this session, but Spinder also was saying that because when you're communicating to the marketplace, to the journalists, to your social media, you do need your pictures. So what I would invite you to do is start to collect, almost like a collage, mm. just start to collect photographs which mm. you think represent your story. Mm. And I would like you to collect pictures which re represent the struggle, the issue, the challenge, the problem. Mm. Then take photographs of whatever that you offer, the service. And mm. then take photographs of the happy ever after. Notice yeah. I, that this is a theme that I'm sharing with you. We need, to, we need photographs of the transformation. We need yeah. photographs of what does the person look like when they receive? So, for example, with Pasafik, he is an amazing architect. He's one of the leading architects in the country. He is, the, uh, he is what I would regard as the go-to architect in Rwanda. However, we need a story which, where we can see that his clients have been transformed, that they're not simply just getting a good service no we need to see that the how the clients have been transformed 
and that means you we need photographs of that transformation the before and after so i'd like your photographs for all of you to be collecting pictures of the before and the after and the transformation Absolutely, and you can you can use you know go to Google Images and just see what's out there for now. Just just see what images connect with you. And uh, Deb has presented a really nice way of presenting it. You know the struggle that is faced, the service that you offer, and therefore the happy ever after. And we'll we'll create for you on Padlet um, some mood boards that you can just play around with and just upload images, maybe even sounds or videos that you think really represent what it is that you. Uh, you're achieving just to articulate that grand message further. Um, Priscilla, what would be the one thing that you're going to be doing after this session? Um, thank you. Um, this was such a very insightful and exciting session at the same time. I mean, I just went through the book um, <laughs> when you shared the link, but attaching it to the author <laughs> i think it also brings back the idea of attaching the brand to the person behind the brand uh -huh. um, it adds so much value to it and um that's the one thing i've walked out of the session with saying that it's always very very important for the customers or the people you're targeting to buy your products to know the person behind the product the story behind the product which is actually what um, motivates them to buy your products. And um, one more thing I'm going to do after here, or after today is complete my Padlet, is it? Yeah. And, and make sure that um, it's, it's updated so that I can, I can base on that moving forward. Right, well, we know that you, you, you wanna put up, I think your six word proposition, don't you? So give that some yes. more time to think about that. And of course, all of you, you know, the, 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 the Padlet's always there, the, the canvas is always there, and gradually as you think of new ways of articulating your revised and rewound business model, you can start to shape it and shift it. And it's great to hear the feedback that you've all got out of today's session. We're delighted mm -hmm. to hear that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. You know, this is a collaborative um, uh, effort it relies on us all working together. And I think there was a really a great amount of collaboration today. So thank you very much for making this an enjoyable couple of hours for, for us. And, yeah. Uh, Deborah, <laughs> yeah. you want to say, you say the yeah, final no, I'm, words. I'm agreeing the, the enjoyment and because Bonfield, Bonfield, sorry, we have to enjoy this, don't we? We have to play and create. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, we do. We have to create ourselves through play. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's probably a good way to a good place to stop today. Thanks yeah. so much for your time. As you know, I'm going to be sending out some more information to you um, after this session as well. Just the, the notes we've been through. And I'll also upload the uh, video and uh, send out the audio. So you've got this to keep. You know where we are. Thank you for a lovely session. Thank you. And yeah. uh, we'll oh, talk to you again you soon. Too. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank bye you. Bye. 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 Bye.